so this is a Bedlington Terrier. Um, they have a, a different texture of coat. Anybody that wants to come up and touch it, if you've never seen one before, they're not a super popular breed, um, but they are something that you may see in your salon at some point. I'm gonna try to do it, she's not used to electric tape. Okay, that's a little better. Now I can see, you guys. there we are. <laughs> um, so a terrier is a terrier is a terrier. This is a long-legged terrier, and when we have short-legged terriers, we talked about short-legged terrier last time, the Scotty. Um, that's part of your certification. If you're doing National Dog Groomers Association, part of your certification is you have to do a short-legged terrier and a long-legged terrier. Um, there are still a lot of very similar patterns, despite the fact that this looks really fluffy and pretty, and they look like a little lamb. The lines on the side of the face and the lines on the body and all of that stuff is very similar to an Airedale, just the head shape is different. We talked about that last time. Um, with the short-legged terriers, the same thing. Mostly the body pattern is basically the same and the head is different or the tail's a little bit different. So once you get those things stuck in your head, as far as a lot of the sporting breeds, their patterns are extremely similar. There's just very little tweaky things that if you were showing the dog would be different. But for your pet people, if you get that basic pattern down, you're golden. All you gotta do is figure out that, you know, the Brittany doesn't get at the top of its ears shaved, but the Springer does. You know, little tiny things like that. The, the rest of the basic pattern is all the same. Whether you're clippering, strippering, stripping, whatever you're doing, your basic pattern is, is very, very similar when you're talking about sporting breeds and terriers. You, it's, this head is completely different than anything we do anywhere else, except for possibly a Pumi, but they're different too. But it's that same, you know, where you're leaving all of this stuff over the face. So um, it's something that is, is kind of difficult to do because it's not something that you're used to. So that's why I wanted to bring her today. And I just, this, she's the only one that I have in my mobile and she's a pretty good girl. She's a little nervous today though. She's not too sure what's happening while all these people are looking at her. <laughs> yeah, you okay? Um, but this is a pet trim. I'm not going to, I'm going to scissor the legs, but the whole body is going to get clippered and the face and all that stuff is going to get clippered. Um, because I'm not showing this dog, um, one and two, this hair mats. If you look at it crooked, so she get she's, she's in my mobile every two weeks for a bath. Um, because if, if she didn't, we wouldn't even be able to keep this on her legs and her head because it just, it, it mats like crazy. Like the mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's both. Okay. She's a pet and this, this texture of coat, when you see these guys in the show ring, if you, if you start going to shows and start seeing them, this and on grooming competitions, there's tons of product in all of this, just like with a Westie. There's powder, there's spray, there's cholesterol, there's all kinds of stuff to make it, you know, the perfect column and the stand up straight and all that stuff. And that's something that if you get really interested in, we can do, you know, separate classes on more show type things. Um, but today, you know, we're just going to do, we're going to do a, a pet trim on her because we need to, you know, nobody's going to use one of these to certify with unless you guys have a bunch of them from Hillary for some reason. Um, but part of the difference with this breed is that they have a rat tail, so we shave this part, and they, they carry it basically tucked under their body. And what they have is they have a slight rise over the loin on their top line. It's not level like Poodles and Scotties and all that. And you can actually see the dip behind the shoulders and then the rise up over the loin. And for her, she's got a fairly decent little rise over her loin. I just clip her this, because we don't need a dinosaur hump. It's a slight rise over the loin. So you get this little bit of a rise. So if you're doing, when I was doing it on my little poodle, I had to build that because he was a level top line. So I had to cut it in here and then I would leave a little bit of hair right over his loin like that. Well, a lot of times when you see a new competitor come in with a Bedlington or, or a Poodle they're putting in a Bedlington trim, you see this huge hump 
because that's what our brain tells us, there's this thing here, and it really isn't. It's just a very slight rise over the loin. When a poodle's in a Bellington, mm -hmm. you, you have to build, you have to, it's called, the, we call it a poodlington, yeah. That's the miscellaneous, you know, class, not creative, but the, the other class where you're doing um, dogs in non-traditional trims or breeds, you know, like little teddy bear trims on Shih Tzus and stuff, or, or a braid trim, you know, a Bedlington trim on a poodle. Or a Carrie Blue or, on a poodle. Or a Carrie Blue on a poodle or, you know, whatever that, you know, um, I think it used to be called the Potpourri class, but I think they changed it to m mixed breeds or I don't know what they've changed it to this year, particularly for NDGAA, I'm not really sure. Um, and anybody that's wanting to do tassel ears, they get tassel ears, and this applies to poodles also. But they don't let you certify doing a Bedlington, a poodle in a Bedlington. No. You have to actually have it. It has to actually be the breed for certification. For, for the miscellaneous competition, you can. But for actual certification, you have to have, you have, to have the breed of dog. Now, when they, when they show these guys, they do a 40 in reverse on these ears, okay? But we don't want to do that with our pet dogs because, you know, number one, their skin's going to be more sensitive. They're not used to it. And number two, that's not something that most of your pet owners want to see, is it that short? So a 30 with the grain is usually plenty short enough. And the trick to tassel ears is you've got to come all the way down to the bottom of this ear and leave the center. A lot of people leave it up here and can't figure out why they can't get the little tassel at the bottom. And it's because you're leaving the whole edge of this ear. And you shave the whole underside of the ear. She gets, she gets clipped probably about every six weeks or so. She's on my schedule every two weeks for a bath and then her mom will just go, okay, it's time for a haircut. And we do a haircut. And because she comes to see me every two weeks, I pretty much do whatever, whatever her mom wants. Um, I don't pluck a lot of ear hair. She does have really woolly ear hair, so I do pull some every once in a while, but I don't pull ear hair every single time. If, if you do that, you're, you're opening up that ear to way too much bacteria on a regular basis, and I think you're, I think you're causing more problems than you're solving. All the, every, every dog that needs ear plucking, I don't pluck ear hair on my poodles ever. Okay. You tell that to you just to say that same thing yep. to the owner. Yep. Plus well, maybe it's gunky or matted or the special situation where you yep. think it's yeah. obstructing being able to clean things. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll pull it, but then I tell them I pulled it, and I tell them that it's not something I do all the time. And if they'd like to bring me a note from their vet that they want me to pluck their ear hair every single month, then I'm happy to do it but I don't want to hear it. But there's risks involved with that. I don't want to hear it when they get ear infection. infections. When they have a chronic ear infection, I don't want to hear about it. And we try to work with the vets to help have yes. relationships so that they don't constantly tell them Absolutely. that go get the ear, you know, we have to oh, yeah. Because then they don't do the glands. Yeah, no, same conversation with the glands. You know, the, the right. vet says have the groomer do it, the groomer says have the vet do it. It's, right. Yeah, that's a whole nother. Get your story straight for this. Well, here's my thing. A lot of times when I have a dog that needs anal glands done, nine times out of 10, it's a really fat dog. I can't get them that way from the outside. Not my job to go inside. That's the vet's job. Yeah, we just don't at all anymore, just period. Not yep. internal, external. We never did internal, but even external, just yeah. not at all. I don't blame you then. That's If that's your store policy, it's then our, that's fine. Well, it's been about a year now probably we've had that. Yeah. It just makes it so much easier because we also notice that sometimes even if they feel fine, they might not be fine. Right. And so we don't want to be responsible yep. for And then you express it and you got blood and pus and everything and, else. And, yeah. Yep. You don't, don't want to mess with that. bring it to the customer's attention that they should right. get it checked out. Right. But sometimes even they're not swollen, they can still have a problem. Yeah. But yeah. 
I, I do on request and that's because I'm mobile and I have a very, very good relationship with my clients. And if I tell them I'm not doing it, then they know there's a reason. If you guys want to come up and take a look at her ear, you're more than welcome. And then the breed standard, it probably says, but just off the top of your head, the reason for that head is like going to ground, it's protecting right. their eyes. The same thing is like the Westie and all that. Just, they're, yeah. they're protecting their eyes and in the front. And why the tassel? Right. It's so soft. Um, again, it's a protection, protection thing. For rats. Rats nip in the ends. They typically oh. go after rats is what they were bred for. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it keeps the dirt and stuff out you of their really eyes. You can only see her eyes from the yes. side. Yes. Right. That's yeah. awesome. Right. I love that. Yeah. And then now. last time you mentioned about the peripheral Wait, vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, this dog can see, definitely. She yeah. can see me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yep. I love it. Now her mom does have me open her eye a little bit more in the front than I normally do because her mom's. We talked about well, that last time. Yeah, she wants to see her eyes. But if you were, you know, if you were competing with this dog and showing her, this would be covered here in the front as well. Okay. She, only the side of the eye is open. Oh, wow. Do you trim the lashes to like open it up? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So cool. I love Good girl. It. Good job, Lily. <laughs> she's, she's like, why are y'all? Yeah. She's so used to it just being me. Like, uh -huh. I get her done in an hour and a half in my mobile, and she's just like, she came in here like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> it smells like the mobile. Yeah, but I don't get it. <laughs> There's all these people. Good girl. Good job. Good girl. Yeah, it's very solid. Good girl. Good job, Lil. So good. Good. Oh, wait, hold on. That was so adorable. <laughs> she says, take me home. Stop. <laughs> oh, very cute. You'll have to send that to me. I'll send it to her mom. She says, she says are you safe? <laughs> Get me out of here. I'm going to do her other ear real quick now that you guys have seen it. In the inside of the party also? Yep. And I, I always do all my clipper work first, and I always bathe everything first. If you're working on dirty hair, you're ruining your blades. At minimum, you're going to end up with uh, more, more sharpening, and your blades aren't going to last quite as long as they should. Because sand and dirt and stuff is basically, I mean, it's like diamonds. You know, it's cutting the edges yeah. of your stuff. And maybe you have certain blades that you use for pre-shave matted dogs. Well, you don't have the matted dogs. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, or fortunately, back, however you look at it, I don't do that anymore. Way back <laughs> if you did, or other places yes. that do, you yeah. would maybe just have some designated for pre-shave. Yeah. Um, and honestly, once I learned how to wet shave, I don't. Wet shave? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I don't, I don't really shave. To this, like, I mean, it doesn't matter. Matted. Doesn't matter. Really Throw them in the tub. And but it's Throw them in the, the skin. When they're Throw <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've heard, yes, we've yep. heard of this before, and we've Can tried what? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, towel dried. Okay. Blow. It's Put the force dryer on them. It loosens it right oh, up. No. It we'll do this. We'll do this again. I hadn't really. I'm telling you guys, totally it. it's a new but thing, it, we'll it's a newer it. thing, it's not something we've traditionally learned how to do, and it's scary, but I'm telling you, it, it saves absolutely gobs of time and wear and tear on you and the dog. And it's...